So there's about 83 JavaScript frameworks out right now. And it honestly feels like every day on Twitter, there's some guy posting about some new and improved crazy new framework that has come out for JavaScript. And since I'm a developer with no life, I thought to myself, let's try out 14 of the most popular JavaScript frameworks right now. And you're probably asking, what will we be building? In these 14 JavaScript frameworks, we will be building a counter app. The whole point of this is just to try out each of these frameworks, see what's cool about them, the benefits, the annoying parts, because there's going to be some annoying ass parts <laughs> this is like i'm losing my mind i'm losing my mind it's oh. And in general, just try out frameworks for fun. And so the first framework we started out with was React. It's the most basic one and the most popular one out of the bunch. There's nothing really special about it. All we really had to do was create a use state with a couple of functions, update the values, and then insert it into the HTML. Basic so far, I've always used React. I continue to use React. So, you know, nothing cool so far. So there we go. Pretty easy, obviously, just using the use state. So on to the next one. Svelte was the next JavaScript framework that we used. And now the main selling point of Svelte is to get all the benefits of React, like state management, but have the syntax and the usage very close to vanilla JavaScript. And honestly, I had no issues with this. It was so easy to use. It was so, so, so simple. And I really enjoyed it. It was really quick. Second app is done. We've done Svelte and React, two of the most popular ones. So no surprise there for kind of how easy that was. Everything was on one page and it just felt, you know, it just felt right. You know what I mean? And the next one that I used was Vue. And now the whole point of Vue.js is to make the development process simpler and easier to write. I didn't really have much problems with it. It was very close to basic React, obviously with some differences. There we go. Okay, okay. It's just funny because I'm used to React and I understand what's going on. It's just a different way of explaining things. You know what I mean? And the best way to put it was it was a mix of Svelte and React. You got like the benefits of both in a weird way where you had everything in one page but you also had the state management from React. The next framework that we used was Angular. Now Angular has a weird alt-like following, I feel like. And the whole point of Angular, obviously like most of these frameworks is to just make writing JavaScript easier. And frankly, it felt a bit extra for what we were trying to build. It just felt like a perfect framework where it was just low enough and close to JavaScript that you can like really see yourself using it, but it was also not too difficult to, to understand. I kind of cheated on this one. I kind of looked online and like just asked because the setup was really annoying. Like I was trying to connect this template URL to this one and I was messing up with the setup so I had to <laughs> ask a little bit of questions and look online for counter apps. For this one we just had to create the HTML on this page and we're just adding the click and the increment and then over here we're just creating those functions. Very interesting and I definitely see myself using this if I am making a team and I'm making like some sort of a huge application. Angular is definitely going to be on that list. And now the fifth and I think the most interesting framework we used was HTMX. Now out of the bunch here HTMX is the first framework that wasn't really a framework. You see the whole point of HTMX is that you don't install anything and you don't you know create a library like you're not using create react app or create HTMX app. Instead it's made as a lightweight option to react where you're just importing it into your HTML and using it like you would in a vanilla JavaScript app. So I was reading through the HTMX sort of docs and it was saying that you don't install anything. It's kind of just like a CDN where you just like import it like this. And I kind of felt like it was just JavaScript, but with additional powers. And honestly, out of the bunch, this felt like the least framework-like. Like I was using vanilla JavaScript, but I was also using HTMX as a tool to like update things. It was very, very, very interesting. So far, I honestly find this one the most intriguing because you're writing just plain old JavaScript, but also implementing HTMX as it's like little bit level higher. So that's nice. And once we had that done, the next framework that we used was Preact. It just felt like React, but faster. That was its main selling point. And honestly, when making everything, it just felt that way. You know, it had additional imports that I had to do, but I just installed it, did the components like I usually would. You know, everything just went like React would be. This is just React, but I think what I found uh, or what I saw was the DOM works differently. So it's just the behind the scenes, but basically there we go. The next React framework we used was something called lit. I don't know why it's lit, it just feels like a, you know, modern term. It's it just says that it's a productive and faster way to write basic React. And you just build shareable components. That's all they're saying. Like you build shareable components easier and faster. And honestly, this felt like the most basic out of the bunch. Like on their site, they said that a bunch of big companies use it. And I'm not surprised. Oh my God. 
nothing really special to it. It just felt mediocre. And since we already did like, I guess we're at our sixth one so far, it just felt basic, right? I'm getting bored at this point. This was a record time when we, uh, I mean, we kind of got the help. <laughs> we kind of got lucky because it gave it to us like an example one. I didn't even mean to get this one. I just went to the docs and like just downloaded a template project. I didn't even know it was a counter project. But yeah, now Alpine JS was the next framework that we used. And this honestly felt exactly like HTMX. I just used it in HTML where we just imported it. I'll be honest, this and HTMX were definitely one of the more interesting of uh, framework. And throughout developing that for this one, I was just mind blown by having this as a framework. Like you were literally just calling data and updating values within your HTML without having to install React. Look at it, it's so simple. So you, you just have the data here. You give it this class count. You're just making sure it's in here. And then you're adding it. This is actually a nice one. I, I really like this one. But sadly for us, here's where things kind of went downhill. You see, we used SolidJS as our next framework. And the whole point of SolidJS was to make your apps faster. But bro, it just felt so, so, so extra to write. Firstly, the setup was super annoying. And then once we got the setup done, it just felt like the development process was clunky for no reason. It felt weird and just felt like blah, you know what I mean? And bro, I just roasted an entire development team that worked on this for years. So I'm sorry, but I just didn't like it. And frankly, by the end of this counter app, I just felt like I was losing my mind because we were repeating ourselves, but we were taking extra steps with new frameworks that we had to learn. And it was just, it was extra for no reason. <laughs> this is like, I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. It's all. Oh. And so Quick was the next framework that we use. And like Solid, it's meant for fast running time. And this one's the most annoying one out of the bunch. For example, I had to put a dollar sign with the state management. This one I spent the most time on. I literally spent like 30 minutes on it and nothing was working until I finally got it to work because I was missing a freaking dollar sign that I wasn't importing. Finally, I was missing a freaking dollar sign. This whole time I've been missing a dollar sign. And just like solid, I didn't see the point of it. It was very mediocre. I, and I don't really see the point of using something like this when you have React in the first place. What I did was I created a component folder with the counter. And then here I kind of just wrote everything. Just like the other one out, what is it? Lit, right? Or no, pre, I don't know. Too many to think of. Yeah, it just looks so you're just importing the state. So that's it. And once we had that done, we used Ember.js. And now Ember is used for more complicated applications. And I definitely felt that when making the counter app. I could just see myself when making a huge application, why this would be a benefit. Like you were making a bunch of pages, like you had an HTML page, a JavaScript page, a layout page, and you were just interactively using all of those. Like you could even see like a bunch of files for just such a basic counter app. And for such a cute logo, you'd think it'd be like an easy language to understand, but no, trust me, this was insane to use. And it kind of felt like C++ or C in JavaScript. This is very odd, but here we're just grabbing the counter JS. We just created a JS file. Again, this is, I guess, a function, which is saying action. And you're just adding shit, right? I mean, nothing special. A lot of docs though. Cool overall, it was really cool to learn. And you know, we built the counter app. And then after that, we used Mithril. Mithril, I'm not sure which one to say. And Mithril's main selling point is that you use it for one page applications. And they say that because you only use parts of the DOM that you really need to, like you're not importing the whole DOM. And this one was definitely very interesting. Like I don't have anything negative to say about it, but I also don't have anything good to say about it. It was just, wow, you can just use it. And here, all I just did was again, just an on click with a set counter add plus plus you know what i mean right like and finally the final framework we used was aurelia aurelia um again i don't know how to say it and this is built using typescript and it's supposedly easy to learn and empowers people to build components using vanilla js and again i guess it's fine i had to install a lot of things and i had to like have a javascript page and an html page it just felt like vanilla javascript i guess that's what they're trying to say yay we did it i had to change the counter ts to a js that's all this one was just super basic nothing really special about it and so yeah those were the 14 that i used hopefully you liked the video i spent literally almost four hours developing this i did it in one sitting so hopefully you enjoyed this and you found one pretty cool i personally really liked alpine js and htmx the most and yeah if you like this video then please like and subscribe i suffered for you so you better and yeah if you're interested in building cool shit i have my own learning platform with a bunch of free stuff on that so i'll leave that down below and yeah happy coding and i'll see you in the next video Bye bye